Hello everyone, it's good to see you all back. Let's start today's video with a comment that was recently made by someone on my previous video. The user Unforgettable Wolf disagreed with Balador's usage of Raw, which I don't blame them, and gave me a reason why. But at the same time, they then recommend doing something interesting with Salvation's Grip, I believe that's Salvation's Grip, and Osiomancy Gloves for a more unique synergy between the two. And you know what? This combo is actually really good if you like turning the entire map into a landmine. Now I did make a few changes, but it's still worth the investment in a number of ways. So today, I'm going to show you why Osiomancy Gloves and Salvation's Grip on Prismatic is pretty fun to use. So before we start, what crazy build combo have you been running lately? Be sure to comment below. I'll start with general aim and exotic of the build. Our aim is to make sure we are able to maximize on the four uses of stasis wherever we go, but also leaning heavily into the kit to further expand our buffs. For this, we will be using Osiomancy Gloves and Salvation Grip. I'll start with the exotic armor, Osiomancy Gloves, with its exotic effect, Fervid Cold Snap. It states, your cold snap grenades have an additional charge that recharges quick on impact. The seekers spawn from cold snap grenades travel further. We will be using the exotic gloves with bleak watchers for double bleak watchers on hand. Having two will immensely help with covering multiple areas at once when surrounded and need more time to react. At the same time, on prismatic, further combining this with feed the void aspect and getting it active will allow us to spread bleak watchers effect more often with thanks to the grenade cooldown. It's quite honestly the most easiest and safest combo around that will heavily carry a new player into in-game effectively. Our second exotic is the Salvation Grip with its exotic effect, Cryo Cannon, which states, This weapon's charged projectile creates a pattern of stasis crystals on impact and freezes nearby targets. The newly revived weapon is a lot more fun to use, especially if you run full stasis within your kit. While our build isn't going down that path, it still provides some interesting interaction for what we are aiming for. For example, if your glaciers freeze or slow a target down and kill said enemy afterwards, it will trigger feed the void for health regen and grenade cooldown. Now using this as a whole will provide destructive damage everywhere, but also grant you ability side effects, which of course will all benefit from. For aspects and fragments, we have the following. Feed the void, where defeating targets with any ability kills will activate devour. Bleak Watcher, where holding and converting your grenade will turn it into a stasis turret that fires slow projectiles. A faster command, where freezing or suppressing targets reloads your equipped weapon, increases stability, aim assist, airborne effectiveness, and also grants shards or void breach. A faster devotion, where defeating targets afflicted with stasis or strand debuffs grants bonus light transcendence energy. Faster solitude, where landing rapid precision hits emit a severing blast from the target. Facet of Balance, where rapidly defeating light targets grants melee energy. Rapidly defeating dark targets grants grenade energy. And Facet of Ruin, which will increase the size and damage when you shatter a stasis crystal or frozen target. Solar Ignition's area effect also gets increased. Similar to what we ran with the last time, I've made a few changes to accommodate the playstyle we are running with. Key changes are replacing Facet of Hope and Dominance for Facet of Devotion and Solitude instead. Devotion is a new one that I don't believe I've covered before, but its effect fits perfectly for what we are running with. The lack of light based abilities for light transcendence energy is concerning if you intend to use prismatic a lot, but the following is going to allow us an easier way to manage it without the need of sacrificing anything else. The solitude of course will further enhance the many debuffs being applied to enemies, and something like this on the hand can be a lifesaver when against bosses. For example, using Salvation's Grip Charge Attack and weakening the boss damage will make it easier to survive most one-shot attacks since the bosses won't be able to land a hit or generally do enough. The rest of the kit is pretty much the ideal items you want for survival, and Facet Command is pretty interesting if you want a quick way to auto-reload all your weapons in a moment's notice. So for the mods and stats, we have both Resilience and Discipline marked as our top priority, with Strength also playing a part. Resilience, we have Isle at tier 10 for a 30% damage reduction. No key mods are needed for this area, as having Devour will be enough. Discipline, we have Isle at tier 10 for a 1 minute 1 second cooldown via cold snap grenades. The following are needed for the build to actually work, so unfortunately there is no way of avoiding this at all. A good thing though is that cold snap grenades are quite flexible and effective with dealing with multiple enemies at once, so while it may lack damage, 
it will make up in versatility instead. Since both the Vawa and Osiomancy will grant grenade regen, having the following will support the rest of the kit as follows. Momentum transfer times 1 for a 12% mini buff, impact induction times 2 for a 17% grenade buff, and distribution for a 4% all ability buff will be suitable for the build. Additional mods, we have the following. A stasis siphon for creating orbs of power via stasis weapons, charged up times 1 for a plus 1 in armor stacks we carry, a stasis weapon surge times 1 for a 10% stasis weapon buff, and heavy finder, reserves and scavenger ammo mods are highly recommended for the heavy weapons we are currently using. As we have covered our exotic heavy weapon, I would then advise you to pick a super weapon for the build. These are all optional, but do hold some benefits toward the build. Primarily, we have the disparity with headstone and pug list. The following is being used as an anti barrier weapon, but also for the ability to create stasis glaciers via headstones and also destroy them much faster via the hacky breach armaments perk. Very much a recommended role, as it makes running any sort of stasis build a requirement with how synergetic it can get. For free to play players, going to Banshee and going to the focusing area will offer you plenty of stasis primaries to pick. Now, one of the most favourite ones to pick is the Crate, which is a fantastic one to get as it can get Headstone and is highly recommended by a lot of players. A secondary, we have the Aberrant Action with Incandescent and Ambitious Assassin. The following works well with my facet of Ruined Fragments and also pairs well with the high uses of Stasis Crystals being made as it can shatter them quite easily. If you need something simple and hard hitting, then this is great to select. Now, free to play players, any secondary is fine to pick here. But if you can get the heliocentric sidearm with Hill Clip and Kill Clip together, then you'll do amazing with this in end game. So, while this might not be a Battle Doors lookalike build, which I will be doing another one quite soon, this is more for those who like pure, utter destruction through stasis alone. The three key items needed for the build is generally what will make the build pop with excitement when being used pretty much anywhere you go. And as long as you make sure your abilities and ammos are kept afloat, you can do some pretty amazing stuff with what you have. One thing I don't see people talk about nor praise is how Salvation Script exotic effect feels more exotic compared to its previous variations. Just charging the weapon will release a ton of stasis glaciers, which can slow, freeze, or kill anyone caught near it. And if that doesn't work, you can always follow it up with normal attacks that feels kind of like bowling in a way. Combining this with double bleak watchers, facet of ruin for that extra damage, and command for reloading your weapon and creating shards, and you get a build that will constantly reward you for detonating any glaciers nearby. And if you think about wanting to support your allies, then your solar super and facet of solitude is enough for making a game changer when dealing with a boss or multiple mini bosses at once. Although many will say status subclass will be better if you want to lean more into this, I would say Prismatic is a better choice to select, as with the following class, you have more variations to mix and match and make a build capable of being used pretty much anywhere you like. I will cover a status version at some point, but I'm still experimenting with Prismatic and some builds not seen by anyone until now. I hope this build will bring you the same joy I got from it, from playing around with it in GMs. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on content shared, then please leave a comment below. While if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos, then leave a like and a sub while you're here. The dim link for the build is located below in the pin section, and I do advise you to check out my playlist for more. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.